obviously you have your ups and downs and the question you have to ask yourself is am i better off you know at this point with what's going on between us are we am, am i better off without or with that person Hey, Common Sense, thank you so much for joining us today. He not only is an award-winning playwright, but he's also an award-winning director. He also was at Sundance. I mean, what else could you ask for? Please help me welcome Candido Tirado. You have worked with your wife, and you guys have done some wonderful work together. What's that process like? Because, you know, uh, you guys really have created some wonderful, wonderful pieces together that I've seen. But something we have in common is that we both love structure, how to tell a story, what, you know, cause and effect in a story. We love that. And so we we find it. We're writing a movie right now. It's so much fun, like we, the way we play off each other. And how about this? And then go, yeah, and this would lead to that. And so that's the fun part, putting the story together. That comes the technical of making sure that everything fits and, you know, and the movement of the story and all that stuff happens. So we actually are very good friends. Uh, we were friends, artistic friends, before we got involved with each other. We have that connection of, also the way we approach work is very similar. And that's a miracle. It wasn't like we're trying to copy each other. Um, what we like about story is very similar. That could have been different. We have friends who are good friends, who are writers. We don't think alike at all it becomes tougher to work with those people. And how did you two meet? We, we actually met at the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater when I was having a dress rehearsal of my play, my first off-Broadway play, First Class, and she came to the dress rehearsal. After the play was over, she, she congratulated me, and then we started talking, and we talked like for two hours, you know, like right outside the theater, and, and then we actually were going in the same direction, and we took the train together, and that's how we met. But I was involved with someone else, so it wasn't like romantic. It was like, wow, uh, you know, this is an amazing person that I might be able, um, because she also was into writing. She was just beginning her journey. I wanted to keep in touch with her because I like to really be around young people, and I want to be able to give them some of my experience as a writer. If they want it, if they don't want it, that's fine too. You know, some people don't want it. Then we lost touch. I went to see a play. Now, my girlfriend at the time and I were bro breaking up, and that takes a while to break up. People don't tell you that. There are breakups. They have, there's a lot of period of time that passes before you officially break up. We went to see a play together, and, and Carmen was acting in it. But she looked different. And I didn't know it was Carmen. Uh, it was, the name of the play was Carmen's Community. It was based on Carmen the Opera. Yes. But so, they, so they had the opera part, but then they had a community part because it was a political theater and Carmen was Carmen in the community. And I wanted to talk to her the whole time. And and she goes, uh, but she had all these people around her. And so I never was able to go talk to her. And then I'm standing with my girlfriend at the time who, you know, we almost like, we're like five minutes away from ending everything. And Carmen walks up and says, hi, Candido. And I'm like, I, I didn't know what to say because I've been trying to get to her the whole night. <laughs> so I had no words. I felt really stupid. I was like, uh, and then my girlfriend goes, oh, this is Carmen. And I go, yeah, no, Carmen, the character, Carmen Community. No, this is really Carmen. And then she told me who she was. And I said, oh, she had moved to Philadelphia. She came back. She had lost some weight. And now she was pursuing the artistic life. You know, she was in corporate America. So, and then I invited her to a lot of parties I was throwing, I used to throw. And she would come. She would come early all the time, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, we were still cleaning up and, you know, doing pre party fun stuff with my friends. And she became part of that community. I started a theater company. I, I invited her. And I saw how special she was. Like, how caring, her generosity, her talent. Uh, I set her up with my friends, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> because I wanted her around and and then uh, it never worked out because, you know, my friends sometimes are crazy 
and uh, then um, this person wanted to hit on her, and he was slime. I said, I better make a move because you can't end up with this person. And by that time, I already had broken up with the other person. You were ready. But she's like, uh, what's that, nine years younger than me? I'm, you know, mid 30s, she's mid 20s, so that's kind of tricky. But Carmen is smart, and you know, our conversation, we would go see shows all the time and plays and have this great conversation. So we actually were very good friends. Well, I'm so glad you're together now because you guys are a fantastic couple. Just, Me it's too. a joy to be around you guys. Just lovely. You know, sometimes you're around couples and you're like, oh God, let me get out of here. But you guys get along so well that it's like, oh, can I go with you? <laughs> I know, we, we, it's, you know, it's funny because in these COVID times when you're not going out and seeing people, we have been so comfortable together and gotten probably closer than ever. Like life passes you by, passes you by and, and you never spend enough time with those people you love. Even if you live with them, you yes. never spend that quality, quality time, like those sweet little moments. And now, you know, up to COVID time, I'm always like, we got to squeeze these moments because we're busy and we're right. going in different directions. And during these months, it have been great because we have those moments. That's we watch the sunset, you know, oh. together. And I, I feel like, okay, we have spent that quality time together because after all, those are the, the moments of your life, right? What I love about you guys, um, uh, first of all, in entertainment, it always is a blessing when you see a couple that's together for a long time and can work together. You know, that are both artists, that are both working, and that sustain uh, a relationship that that is is of the positive nature. We need to see more of that, especially within the black and brown community. So whenever, so I'm always watching. When I see a couple, I'm always like, okay, let me see what they got. <laughs> but when I see a couple of color, I'm in. You know, I'm like, let's see what what's happening here, because there's. There's some jewels here that I need to I need to be able to extract. They're teaching me stuff. How do I get this? And for me, you guys were the first Latino couple that I actually saw not not just a, that you had a good basis, but you also were artistic together. You know, sometimes there's all that jealousy if somebody if one person's doing good, the other person's mad. It's like and it was like, "Wow, this is such a lovely vibe." So anyway, I just wanted to tell you how you guys um, bless me by being in your company and seeing how you guys got along together. And that was, oh my God, that was 2001. And to still see you kicking ass together, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I just wanted to say thank you for being great role models in that area. Well, you know, it's work, you know. Um obviously you have your ups and downs and the question you have to ask yourself is am i better off you know at this point with what's going on between us are we am, am i better off without or with that person and that takes a lot of um thought and it takes a lot of um soul searching and if you are you've been better off with this person you know you have to say well I'm going to fight through this. Whatever anger, whatever thing that's in your way. You know, sometimes it's just growth. I think a lot of it is you growing or the other person growing, and now you have to grow. And you don't want to grow anymore. <laughs> I'm growing, you know, like, and there's challenges. You know, now I'm in this point in age in my life, I'm still growing. And I have to deal with my mortality. You know, that's a new thing in the game plan. We have to talk about that. We have to, I have to be aware of it. I have to go to doctors, you know, just to check myself and, and that stuff. And it means that Carmen's also getting older. So she has to deal with her stuff. But Carmen got ill right after we started living together. 
so we didn't know each other that much. You know, you, you right. have a relationship, uh, you know, that uh, that distant relationship, and now you're living together. And I have friends who said, hey, you don't owe her anything. You don't have to stay with her. And I'm like, no, I'm committed. I'm invested in that person. She's invested in this person. That's what you have to do when you're in a relationship, I think. And we're been able to cross those bridges or build a bridge when we needed to, even if it's a paha, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. Uh, we call it band-aid. Sometimes you're writing a play and you don't have the right answer to you put a band-aid in your play. Like, <laughs> like okay, this is going to sustain me for now. Right, I'll come <laughs> back to it, yes. Yeah, when I come back to it, I'll find the truth. So sometimes you need a, a hay bridge that's going to get you across to the other side. And then, you know, you could rebuild that bridge later on. So we've been very good. Carmen is deep. She could say, well, yeah, uh, we're not going there. We're not going there because that's old stuff. That's old stuff. And you already gotten over that old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not rehashing it. That's right. It's buried. It, the worms ate it. It doesn't <laughs> exist. And now you bring that stuff up. You know, and that works to both ways, obviously. And we go, oh, okay. The other person, you know, we have to go, oh, yeah, that's tough stuff. (laughs) Sorry, I apologize. I don't have a a good uh, version of relationships. My play was about my first relationship when I was 20. And it was crazy. And then I had to go in deep into that relationship. And it it depressed me for like a month afterwards. But I felt I had to get that story because being a young man that doesn't know how to have a relationship, the young woman either. She came from an abused background. So what are we going to do to each other? We're just going to play power abusive, you know, trips on each other. And I'm glad I wrote the play, but it's, it was emotionally exhausting. And it's nice. It's nice creative way that I did the play. So it's fun. It's, you know, it has some new things that I feel dramatically. I was able to explore ways of some storytelling. But it was exhausting to deal with that when I was 20. Yeah. So, but we don't know. Nobody, you know, there should be classes in school. There's yes. some things in school kids should get. They should get money, how to invest, how yes. to make start a business, and how to fix a car, little things that they have to do, how to pay bills. Common sense stuff, yes. Yes. And they need to know how to have a relationship. Yes. How to be able to talk. There should be those classes where you're able to have a conversation about issues that you have and how if something bothers you not to keep it in you and how to talk about it. Right. There should be those classes, right. you know, and like, why are we teaching our kids? Yes. We're teaching them stuff that they're not going to use. And then we say, well, since you're not going to be able to apply it and you're not interested in it, I'm giving you an F. (laughs) Well, no, I'm giving you an F for teaching it to me. Yes. I am in total agreement with you that um, kids should be taught how to be friends at an early age. Because out of that, then you can work on relationship. You know, but kids are thrusted into uh, sexual relationships before they know how to be friends. And so they don't understand... Um, how to protect each other. You know, if, I, if you're my friend, I'm going to protect you. If, mm-hmm. if, if you're my friend, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extend grace to you. I'm going to, mm. you know, I'm going to go, okay, Candido is having a bad day today. No worries. I'll see you tomorrow because you're my friend. But yeah. we're not taught that as little kids unless you come from a home where they really emphasize on how to be friends, how to treat people with respect, and love and not judge them severely but to understand people have bad days and you know you work you work around that but that's not you know uh, uh, unfortunately it becomes a me 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 it's all about me listen you're not servicing me so i'm out of here i'm gonna you know we're the disposable uh culture we dispose everything we don't you know i didn't like that i didn't like how he looked at me so therefore i don't want to be in a relationship with him or i don't want him to be my friend anymore because you know he said something hurt my feelings and that's it instead of you know saying you know what i'm committed to this friendship 
I just want you to know, Candido, you hurt my feelings. When you were mm -hmm. making fun of me, I took it personal. So I, I just mm -hmm. want to let you know that whether, you know, whether you say anything or not, I, I just want to bring it to your attention and then move on. And, and that's a great way of doing it. I was a teaching artist for so many years in the schools and it's the Mimi culture and the bullying culture uh, as part of that, right? To separate yourself from anyone else. So being a bully is also a place into that. When life is so much easier, if we know how to communicate, we should be able to communicate and, and share ideas and disagree. And if you're sad and you did something to me, it doesn't mean you're a bad person because you did this. You're not a bad person. Um, it's just you weren't aware that it, it hurt me. I just want to make you aware right. that, that, that bothers me. And then the person that is being told that, they have to accept it and not just apologize, but hear it, understand it. And that should be taught. And it, it starts, I think, with the golden rule, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I don't like getting my feelings hurt, then I should not go around hurting other people's feelings and understanding. But most of us come from broken families. I don't know about you, but in my household, words were weapons used against you all the time. We call it the tirado tongue. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a vicious, it's vicious. Yes, and it is, you know, it's, it's true. Hurt people hurt people. So how do we um, start to um, stop that, uh, that cycle? How do we say, you know what, moving forward, I want to get to know you on a deeper level. I want to get to understand you on a deeper level. I'm going to I'm going to show up even if you hurt my feelings. I'm still going to show up and show you my best side. As opposed yeah. to um the culture that, you know, growing up in a barrio, if someone hurt my feelings, it's like I'm going to cut you, I'm going to I'm going to punch you, I'm going to hit you with a bottle. And then I never want to see you again. Poverty mentality equals insanity. Um, and your behavior because of lack, you have to put yourself first in a lot of those situations. I grew up in the South Bronx when there were so much violence around me. I mean, horrific violence. And you try to survive that. I think my philosophy has been, and my grandfather said, told me this when I was a kid, He's, I never forget. He says, respect people and demand that they respect you back. So when I'm in situations with, when I teach in jails, when I teach in big schools that the kids are all bouncing off the wall and, and they do, they say something to me, I said, have I disrespected you? I haven't. So I'm giving you my attention and my respect for who you are. And I want you to treat me the same way. And usually those kids just melt because I'm not confronting them on something they did. And I said, you offended me. How can you say that? How can you do this? Or when they, sometimes I'm the voice of reason in the room and the teacher and, and these kids have horrible relationship and they said things to the teacher that you go and I stopped them. I said, would you say that to any other human being? Would you say that to any human being out in the street? Would you say that to anyone else? No, you wouldn't, right? Well, don't say it to this person here. And they don't know how to take that. They, they like back down. I, I see where they're coming from. You know, they come in a situation where they are being talked to like that. And you have to survive a uh, little story. So one day I'm walking in the polo grounds in New York, which is these projects that are like, for, you know, gang and drugs. And it's doing the crack epidemic, right? And it's, I was teaching in school there. And it's very early in the morning, and this and this woman, in the mid twenties, I guess, is has a baby, a maybe two year old, two and a half, and they're walking really fast, and the and the kid, it's like you know she's walking much faster. It's a two two or three year old, and and the kid's complaining, and she like smacks him in the head. You have to keep up. You have to keep up, and they keep walking. So that my first thing is. I judge the woman. I go, that's horrible, that's mothering. Then I realized where I was. That kid doesn't keep up, he's gonna get eaten alive. 
in that neighborhood. And I said, wow, she's given survival skills. All those emotions you felt, I felt. And I, and then it comes to the realization that if that kid doesn't keep up, he's going to be taken advantage of in that area. Because that's, that's one of those areas where, uh, that, I don't know where, how it is today, but I used to go in there and get out as soon as I could get out. Because it's that violent, you know, and that impoverished, and that impoverished mentality um, of taking advantage of people. Yeah, it's that get yeah. them before they get you. And don't fall behind because, you know, when a herd is going, the ones behind are the ones that get eaten by the lions. Right. <laughs> you know, like... The problem is then all they know is survival. Another problem that we have, our, our culture has, black and brown, is that when you grow up in that environment, you have a lot of single moms. And then those single moms have young men. And they then take their anger on the father out on that young man, which then breeds men who hate women. We don't know how to, how, how to separate. We're not given those tools to say, you know what, it didn't work out between me and your father but you won't get that. I will not yeah. put that on you. I will not put that heavy burden on you. I didn't mean to go here, but, but it's just part of that, uh, of that thing of the shame, the trauma, that we keep um, repeating a, a negative cycle, and then we don't understand why that young boy or young girl didn't get to grow up and, um, and just take flight, you know, parents clipping the wings of kids. Most kids don't have that spirit, that fighting spirit that says, you're not gonna stop me. We wanna keep people down, and especially in yeah. our communities. But yes. we're breaking those cycles. We, uh, yes. with, with our art, we are breaking cycles. We're helping people heal, you know, mm -hmm. heal from the shame, the trauma, the toxic, um, uh, energy, the toxic spirits. Um, you know, I, yeah, I think that's what art does. Yeah. Art brings healing. It brings um, awareness. It, 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 it brings um, aha moments. What's your superpower as a husband? That I'm not demanding. You know, it doesn't have to be my way. It doesn't have to be like, there's that thing, like, I'm, I'm basically, because that's my own survival, I don't want to be in a situation where I have to do all these things, all these social things, because I'm an artist. And we miss birthdays, and we miss Christmases, because we're in a project. So I don't want to be where I have to be always in that, okay, let's drop everything, let's go to a birthday party, or to a baptism, or whatever. You know, kids have so many days, and if you have more than one, there's all these celebrations. I said, um, so I don't demand it from Carmen that she has to go to see my families if my nephews are doing something. Or and I tell her, and for your family, I, they have one day with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's my, and that's growing up. Right. That's being a grown up. Because what happened is it, it creates a lot of conflict when there's all these birthdays and all these graduations and all these baptisms and all these whatever you know it just I'm not that person and knowing that then I don't put pressure and I think a lot of couples is always running around their families and maybe if you don't have if you're not a creator you know that we're creating things then yeah that might be a good thing but for me those social events kill me <laughs> you know because everyone lives far, so you're right. talking about a two-hour trip, going to an hour trip, coming back. Um, we might have to spend the night sometimes. So right. I think that's not being demanding like that. And and again, whatever I have, Carmen has. Yes. So she has access, whatever little money I got or whatever, she has 100% access to it. It's not a division. Sometimes in 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 uh, relationships, uh, sometimes the man wants something that he won't give back to the other person, and that's not the case, you know. For me, um, I want Carmen to 
Carmen is an equal partner in, the, in our corporation, <laughs> the Toronto Rivera Corporation, you know, and, and what that comes with love and whatever finances or whatever creativity. Um, she's a complete um, uh, member of that, and so am I. Knowing weaknesses and strengths and understanding. For example, when we first got married, we were in Italy and we went some musician uh, Tito Puente was playing there and our friend knew Tito Puente uh, some people in the band that we went out to dinner and, he, and the guy says I'm going to give you advice how you how to make sure that your marriage survives have one bank account Which I'm, I'm coming and I looked at each other and said that's not happening <laughs> that's not happening and why is that well Carmen is very meticulous about keeping a, uh, uh, an account and in keeping uh, the books of our account to the pen. Me, I generally know how much I got. <laughs> I don't do that type of work. So if we have one bank account, Carmen keeps asking me, well, give me the receipt, give me the receipt. You would drive us crazy because I won't keep the receipts. I, and I said, that actually will get a divorce next week. If that was the case. <laughs> so, you know, being aware of who you are. Right. It's a very big super, and that it's not a conflict. Just, right. I'm not going to change. Right. And, I, and karma is not going to change. Right. And accepting that. You know, sometimes people say, well, somebody, to, we should grow as people. We don't have to change. Right. Growth doesn't, doesn't mean change, right? Right. There's, there's, it's a very fine line. Um, when we travel together, I had a hard time traveling. You know, I was out of my comfort zone, and I was horrific at traveling. Carmen loves to travel. She loves to see everything. You know, we had a lot of conflict until we came, well, what can, how can we travel together? You know, and that came off from Carmen. How can we travel together? Let's find a place where we both could feel comfortable. I, I get claustrophobic if I go to places that are enclosed. I want cities. Well, what cities are there that she also wants to see, that I want to see, and then, uh, then we both feel fine, right? If you say, well, you have to do this because that's what I like, that's what I want to do, then it creates problems. Right. And compromise. Think, how, how to, how to yeah. compromise and balance. That has really opened up, uh, has kind of put out the fires of those conflicts. And that shows us how we could travel together. Like, high expectations got to come down and might have to go up. And we meet each other in the middle. Yes. And that, and now when we travel together, it's so easy. Since then, we've gone to a bunch of other places, Spain, and and uh, we went to Turkey and Greece, and, and it's been so easy. Thank you so much for watching, and please, um, anything you want to know about Candido will be in the de in the descriptions, and leave us feedback. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, support Latinos. We need you. We can't do this by ourselves. No matter how talented we are, no matter how gifted we are, if you don't show up, it doesn't help. So on that note, I say thank you. And I just want to remind you to remember to have common sense. <laughs>